You stand there in front of me. Do not perceive my eyes. See these tears trickle down my face. Do not see the pain that is within each pearl that drops down to the ground. Do not see this weak, feeble man, made weak and feeble by you. Do not pity him. What is this intoxication I feel? That elixir that has poisoned mine heart. That I am unable to control it any more. My whole body feels this poison flowing from my heart. Till my head, all around my whole system, my veins. Full with blood and this poison mixed. This poison you have placed within the vessel that is between my breast. If you could take that vessel out and place it in front of my face. What tears would I weep? Weep, yes, weep, for the loss that it feels by its removal. For what use is a man when he has no need of his heart? He's not God's greatest gift to man. The ability and beauty are the very function of the heart. To love, to feel love, to give love, reciprocal love. That fine blessing showered down and misused by many. This intoxication, oh, how sweet it was upon its arrival into my heart. Would I have refused even if I knew what course it would take? Oh, no, I could never refuse it. For thou must know that the love I have received is that beauty. Beauty in a world so dark and cold, so lonely, that now I have been returned to. When I first saw your gaze upon mine, or imagined it so, I thought it as if I travel through the air from the heart that lies gently between your breasts and pulsates when you are touched by gentle hands of love. It flew like a dove from you to me, and whether I stole it from you or you freely gave it, I do not know, for now you stand about me as I have confessed my love to you. And you stand motionless and silent, as if you have never heard such a proposal before, as if the very nature of my argument is insane, that you look upon me in such a disdain as if I were a tramp who asked for the fair maiden's hand and a knee that is whom you are to me, the fair maiden, whose heart I wish to own. I cannot turn my, I turn my back on you. I cannot look at your face no more. Its black skin, its beauty, bright black eyes shining, its lips red and big. Oh, sweet memory, rob me of this vision so that my heart may pain no longer. Oh, skies above me, hear my cries, hear my pain, soak them up in the ether, remove them from my weak body, made weak by the illusions of love. Oh, sweet heart, beats close by my breast, I lay my hands upon you to soothe your pain, to tell you that one day you shall love again, though you feel the cracks appear, you feel the blistering agony, the agony of love never returned. O oh, wretched man have I become, to let myself drown in this imaginary pool of love, to soak myself and bathe myself within it, as if by covering myself with this silvery water of passion and desire and lust, of this woman that stands feet behind me, not uttering a word from my proposal, as if all this would have seen my way through. Yet, why is it that she refuses me? Did I not imagine something that was not there? Did I imagine something that, that was not there? Does she exist even? Is she but a ghost of my imagination, made up to give me purpose in life? For I say again out loud to the skies above, what use is man given the vessel of love, filled to the brim with elixir, to bring life from death, light from darkness? What use is he who gives, who is given such gifts and is unable to use them, is forced to drain that elixir till it burns through his veins and rots his very existence, that the vessel becomes a burden rather than a joy intended. And yet, is it not that what has happened by this refusal? Did I really fall when she stood still? And she stands now. And yet, am I not still falling back to the ground again? For whence I thought I thought love within the chambers of this newborn heart, brought into life after many dead years, like a dead forest within which a bright white butterfly guided its wings outstretched through, and with its passing brought the colours of rainbows, as we lit that dead wood till it was bright brown, with green pastoral leaves and the smell of newly wet grass. Does she not know? Of course she does not know. For what passing between man and night, only he may know what passes in his lonely hour. Only he may feel and know, for no stranger watches on in those lonely times. For if she did, then she would have seen, as dawn approached still I was unable to sleep, her image transfixed in my mind. 
when mine eyes were open, all I could see were her illusions. When closed all, I could see were her image moving towards me, her fine, slender body. Oh, what love would she have for me if she knew that I was unable to sleep, for thought of her, that even my dreams were of her, that when I finally did sleep, and upon awakening my first thought was of her. What love should be mine at the knowledge of such a deep desire? Oh, this poison, is it not both beautiful and destructive? Where is the manual so that I might be able to better guide it? For I am a man out of control, losing within this battle of love, entrenched in the fear of rejection, of being denied that which I seek so much. Should not this very thought bring love to that fair maiden that stands silent and still by my side? Oh, but how much pleasure it is, whether she speaks it or not, to be so near my vicinity, like the very first smell of the coming summer. Freshly wet cut grass, the fresh air that I breathe in. Oh, this beautiful poison she has given me. My cup is not filled to the brim. I have drunk from it again and again. Refill it so that I may be drunk in your very wine. Ah, what have I done? What have I become? A madman lost in the pursuit of love, whose endeavours leaves him less than whence he started. Oh, the pain, the incredible pain that I feel, transcending through out every atom of my being, every vein in my body. This poison, this poison which once was an elixir. Oh, why could she, this fair maiden, not find a kinder eye upon my face? Or a nicer word upon my heart, find itself, could not. I close my eyes and pray to your God above, that you might make her heart inclined to towards me, that I would go down on bended knees and rest in the wet soil below. I would bathe in the mud, if it would earn your pleasure, so that you might grant me this dearest wish, that I am adored, that I am loved by this fair maiden, that rather than a silent and cold nature that stands before me now, that she would wish to embrace me, to hold me so close, that our hearts might become one, that she might, that, our, uh, that she might wish to at all times please her lips upon mine and press hard and leave the imprint that every man desires, that of a love fresh and ever growing, like the rose white flower that grows beyond the trees and by each day is more and more beautified by the your grace, and yet unlike the rose white flower that withers and dies, let this love that I pray for from you now last from the very day of its inception to the cessation of our lives. Take us together and lay us in the ground side by side, so that when we are weak in heaven, we smell not only the beauty of its blessing, but each other's aroma, and hands clenched in life, in death, and in afterlife. Oh, dear God, would it be possible that my very words and desires you could hear, and that I wasn't such a wretched man, that you would grant these desires and fruition them into being, so that I might turn around as I do now and see before me, not a silent and cold statue, but a grace from heaven above, a fair maiden full of love and vigor, inclined only towards me, this weak man that stands now in front. Oh, dear maiden, how do you find my love? Does it please you? Oh, fair maiden, how do you find my love? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Burton.